Hi, in this video I'd like to show you data science in the upcoming version of SNAP 5. Let's look at some real data sets. I love the Corgus datasets project from Austin Cory Bard. They've got some cool CSVs. I'm going to look at the data set of the billionaires and it's a comma separated value data set and I'm just going to download it to my computer. Once I've got it downloaded, let's open up Snap. Now, people have been asking, how do we get data into Snap? And we've thought about this. How about this? You just drag it and drop it into Snap. And there you are. A table opens, much like a spreadsheet, and you can examine what's in the data set. There's rows and columns. This one is a pretty big data set, actually. And once you drop it, you already got a global variable with the name of the data set. And a table in Snap is really just a list of lists. Nothing special, just a list of lists. That means that if you want to access any row of the data set, you just can take the item of block. So the item one, the first item, is going to be the header row. The second item is going to be the first record in the data set. So what about a column, the column of citizenship? For this, I'm importing the tools library and there is the map block. Now the map block is really just a function you could write yourself in Snap. And it is a high order function, so you can map over the data set and specify a column as an item. As I'm mapping the third item over the billionaires, I'm getting the column with all the country names. Got it? That's how we can get rows and columns in a data set. Now, as you notice, there are records for many years, but I just want to look at the newest one, which are 2014. So I need to filter the data set. And I do this by specifying a predicate, which I want the 22nd column to equal the year 2014. And so if I filter my data set with this predicate, I'm only getting about 1,600 records as opposed to 2,600 records. Filtering a database often is one of the first steps. Just look at the data that's relevant for you. Now, in this column, there is what the billionaires are worth. Now, I wonder what's the combined worth of all the billionaires in the year 2014. I want to add up all those numbers. So first I want to get that column. Remember, it's map. So here's the column with all the worth. Now I want to take the sum of that. Taking the sum of a list is using the combine block with the addition operator over a list. And to get an approximation, I can round that number. Now I know that all the billionaires in 2014 were worth 6,400 billions of dollars. Now this expression is highly nested and complicated. Here's something that makes it easier to work with nested expressions. Look at the frequency distribution analysis library. There is the pipe block. The pipe block is a block that is also written in SNAP itself. It takes a value and a list of monadic functions with one input each, and it takes the result of the previous function and passes it into the following one. So I start with the billionaires, and I pass the billionaires into the filter function and I'm filtering it. I can try it at every step. I'm adding another step in which I 
map it so I get the column with the worth of the billionaires. And then I'm taking that result and I'm passing it into the combined function. And last I'm rounding it. So the pipe block really turns a nested expression into a sequence of monadic function, uh, which makes it easier to think about the process of manipulating data. Let's find out something about the distribution. Uh, let's make a ranking of the countries by their number of billionaires. One thing uh, that is often done in data science is grouping data by something. For this, we have a group block. It's also a higher, higher order function. Uh, we can group it by the column that holds the country name. So here we have another result table that has the countries and the number of billionaires. And in the third column, we can actually see those billionaires. This is called a drill down. Let me double click on the reference to the actual records. So let's sort this by the second column. There is a sort block and it takes a predicate that compares values. So we take the greater than operator and we want to compare the second column, which is the item two. And now we've got a ranking of the countries. So there's United States, China, Russia, Germany, Brazil, India, by the number of billionaires. Now I wonder what that ranking would be if it weren't just the number of billionaires, but what the billionaires are actually worth in a country. Let's do that. So we're starting with grouping the data set by the countries, but now we want to insert another column in which we want to keep the sums of what the billionaires are worth in that country. To insert another column, I'm just going to add um, uh, l another item. So I'm going to take the first item in the first column, the second item in the second column, and the third item in the fourth column. And now I have one more column. Let's check this out. Now I've got a four column list. And in the third column, I want to put the sum of what the billionaires are worth in that country. So I already know I probably want to round this. And what I am rounding is the sum, which is the combined sum. I'm combining the addition operator over the item, the column 21 of the third column of the input list. So to get the third column, I'm mapping the item 3 over the input list. And then I'm getting the 21st column of that. There. Now I got the combined wealth. And let's sort that. Now I want to sort it after the third column. And here now is a ranking of the countries by the wealth of their billionaires. United States, Russia, Germany, China, France, Hong Kong. Compare that to the ranking of the number of billionaires, United States, China, Russia, Germany, Brazil, and India. So there is a difference how you can aggregate and rank the countries. Let's try something else. Let's look at the age distribution of billionaires. The age is on the first column. So I'm going to group it by the first column. Then 
I want to sort it. So I'm again specifying the predicate. I'm sorting from bottom to top. Now, minus 1 are the ones we don't know their age, so we see it starts with the age of 24, and there is just one billionaire the age of 24 in 2014. Turns out it's a female from Hong Kong. We again can drill down to find out who she is and uh, what she's doing. So she's in real estate. Let's again look at some more. There's three there's three of the age of 29, and we can drill down who these three are. We can see two of them are from Facebook. One is from Germany. And among the two from Facebook is Mark Zuckerberg, who was 29 years in the year 2014. Now, something that um, is interesting is not to see the individual years, but to group them a little differently. So since group is a high order function, we can pass in um, anything, a more complex expression. I'm going to make an expression that is going to group the data set by the decade um, of, their, uh, of the billionaire. So here's the decades. Um, those um, in between 20 and 30, there are six of them. Um, and we can look at the six of them, and now we can see that among the six in between 20 and 30, there is one from Dropbox, two from Facebook, and we see Mark Zuckerberg be now in a group not of three, but in a group of six. So the group block, taking a high order function, is actually very versatile. Now what we want to do is we want to get a full distribution of the ages, and so now we only get entries for where there actually is somebody of that age. But I want to see, like on a scale of 0 to 100 years, what the distribution is. And that's what the histogram block is for. So I can get a histogram of all the billionaires grouped by their age, which is in item 1. I want to start at the age of 0 up to 100. And I can specify an interval of 1 year. And now, I'm also getting zeros for where there is none. And I can get a better distribution, a uniform distribution of uh, those ages I specified. Now in the second column, I'm getting the actual number of people of that age. So let's pick that second column, getting a column again, this map, and the item. Two. Now those are the numbers of people of that age. And there is a block in the pen category that plots a little graph of that. So I can enter that list and specify a bounding box where that plot is drawn on the stage. And let's do that. And here's a histogram of the age of the billionaires in 2014. And we can see most of them are in the second half of their lives. Um, since this plot just takes the histogram block, um, we can also um, make the grouping expression that gives us a group key more complex um, by, again, grouping them by the decades in their lives, for example. This reduces um, the number of entries. And I also need to adjust um, where it starts and the interval. So here's the same histogram with a lesser resolution grouped by decades. Hey, want to see something cool? This works on any kind of data, not just data sets imported.
you know that guy, right? That's me. That's a picture of me. And let me import the stuff I need to work with the data. So I'm importing the tools. Let me import a library to work with pixels. And you guessed it, the frequency analysis um, library. So here's a block that gives me the current costume. And in the looks category, there is a block that lets me query the pixels of the current costume. And it is a table. So using map, I can get the first column of that table, which are the reds. It takes a while since it's uh, 170,000 entries. But, you know, what I really want to get is I want to get a histogram of the reds. So let's get a histogram of the pixels of my picture grouped by the item 1 on a range of 0 to 255 uh, with an interval of 1. So here is the histogram of reds in this picture. Now, um, wouldn't it be fun to plot that? So let's first get the second column, which are uh, the actual um, frequencies, using, again, the map block on the result of the histogram. Here they are. So this is what we can pass into the plot block. Let's plot this. First, I'm going to stamp the picture. And I'm going to actually hide the sprite since it's now holding my picture as a costume. Then I want to set the pen color to red so I can see it better. And plot the histogram. Let's check it out. And here's the histogram of reds in that picture. I wonder what happens if I add the green and stamp it over. This is the second column. And you guessed it, the blue one is the third column. Ta-da!